So if you are looking for a laser, specifically a CO2 laser that sits on a desk, then you probably have come across a Glowforge. In fact, Glowforge is often what I use as a benchmark when I compare other lasers. In fact, over the last year, we've seen lasers from Ohmtech as well as GWIC. I've done reviews of those right up there. Those are great because they come in on the lower end in terms of price. Now, while Glowforge is what we kind of compare everything against, it really hasn't been updated in terms of a machine in quite a while. And this machine right here is what I would call the most direct comparison to a Glowforge. This is the Flux Hexa. We're gonna get into what this does, why you should buy it, why it might be worth the extra money, as well as machines that are half its cost. All right, let's jump into it. So you might have seen Flux in the past, whether it's their smaller BMO machine, which is 30 watts, or their Beambox Pro. In fact, Flux actually has one of the strangest marketing videos I've ever seen for a laser. With Beambox Powerful Laser. But this is the largest and most powerful machine they offer. Actually, this is the most powerful desktop CO2 machine that I know of, 60 watts. That compares to the 50, 55 watts that you might find with the Ohmtech Polar or the GWIC. Not only does it have the most power, but it also has the biggest work area. So we're talking about 28 by about 16 inches. And actually to show you, and you can just see how large of a honeycomb board this really is. In fact, let me just give you a visual comparison. So I just pulled off the honeycomb from Polar. I'm gonna put it on top of this one and you can just see the comparison. One thing I also like with this unit is they have a ruler that is magnetic. This actually can just pop off. I'm gonna drop this back in. And one of the biggest differences and advantages of this machine, this has nearly five inches in terms of clearance on the Z axis and that is compared to two inches with the other machines. Now this definitely helps if you have something thick, but where this really comes in handy is if you are using the rotary, which they do offer with this unit. I don't have one set up right now, but having that extra room for the rotary lets you have extra room for thick stuff like tumblers versus some of the other machines, you really are starting to run into potential issues with that. So overall, this is a really nice build. It's pretty much a full metal construction. Um, the only thing that is not quite as nice as you might find with other machines is instead of this being glass, this is actually acrylic. Uh, so actually it's kind of scratched up as a result. So I'm not getting as good of shots from it, but it still does its job. In terms of motors and mechanical assembly, this is really nice and everything feels really tight. In fact, the top speed on this machine is 900 millimeters per second. And if you wanna see what that actually looks like, you can see here is a part of an engraving test where I set different power levels and engraved all of those at 900 millimeters per second. And having that extra 60 watts definitely helps because even when you're running it at 10%, that's what P10 is, you still are getting some engraving. So this thing is definitely fast and it is definitely powerful. And that balance between power and speed is always the thing you need to look at when you're looking at these machines. I know a lot of diode lasers, which are typically in the five to 20 watt range, they'll advertise some pretty high speeds, but most of the times you really can't utilize those just because you don't have enough laser power to be able to mark it when it's moving that quick. Since you've got 60 watts on this, you really can take advantage of the fact that this is running very quick. Now, in terms of control, you can connect to this over Wi-Fi, USB, Ethernet, or even like a USB stick. And unlike any of the other machines we've been talking about recently, this actually has a color touchscreen controller right here. This gives you some of the basic controls like maintenance, uh, network, machine settings. And one really handy thing is if you go to start, this machine actually has built-in memory. And I found this really helpful because you will have to use either an app or your computer to send a file to the machine. But once you do that, you can run it again and again in the future without having to connect. But coming back to the machine and the build, one thing this does well is I was, I'm always worried that I'm going to like break this lid when I shut it. They do have these little pistons or I don't know what you'd call them uh, that helps to stop it as well as that is, I believe, a safety switch so it can tell when this lid is closed and opened. Now there's two things about this machine that it does really well. The first has to do with the work bed. Like I said, you have a really deep work bed and a lot of the machines like Glowforge or Ohmtech or even GWIC, when you want to adjust the Z axis because you're putting in different thicknesses of material, you'll actually adjust the laser head. Now, instead of that, the entire bed will come up and down. So there are 
few buttons that this has. One will drop this all the way down or bring it all the way back up. And then it has an autofocus feature where if you double tap that, it will use this built-in touch sensor to raise your work bed until it senses it and then it knows where the Z is going to be. I always find a physical way to measure your thickness is always the best route. This is real similar to how a CNC router will do this. And for the most part, that is also gonna be the most reliable. Now, another feature that a lot of these desktop units have is an onboard camera. And that is the one feature on this machine I kind of wish they would improve a little bit just in terms of how it is actually implemented. The camera, I believe, is on the laser head because if you want to get a scan of your work area, so maybe you have a work piece in there like a cutting board and you want to engrave in a certain area, it would be great if you can have a picture overlay, which you can in the software. Now, Glowforge has two cameras, so they have one in the lid, and that is also how Polar as well as GWIC does. What's nice about that is it's wide angle and it can take an image all in one shot. This machine will have to physically move this laser head around to get a scan of the entire area. And when you do that, you're gonna get some like shading differences. So like one side's a little bit darker than the other. So when you get a full look of the work bed, it looks kind of goofy. Now, two big other considerations do you have any time that you deal with CO2 lasers. One is going to be cooling, specifically how you're going to cool the glass tube that is in the back of the machine. Now, normally that's done by running water around that glass tube, which means you're going to have some type of external. Now, a lot of the bigger industrial machines will actually have those as separate units that also double as a chiller, just so you can keep your water temperature down. This one, it's all internal. So I think it is right over here. You can't even see it. So there's like nothing external hanging off. The other thing has to do with exhaust because we're talking about a laser, we're talking about fire and smoke and debris and fumes and all that kind of stuff. This has pretty much your normal setup, pretty much like a big PC exhaust fan on the back of that. They give you a little bit of ducting that you can duct out a window and then you're good to go. Now Flux also offers their own like filter exhaust unit. Uh, and this is like a separate one that you can just plug the hose directly into. It goes into this carbon filter and everything is good. I don't have one of those, so I can't test how well that works. Honestly, the only time I've seen this work really well is with Glowforge, but for the most part, you're gonna want to duck this outside. One thing I have seen companies offer a lot, which definitely helps, is an inline fan, which I've got one over here. And the idea is you get pretty good airflow just with the fan that is built into the machine. But these guys are basically just like a big wind turbine that suck the air out of the machine and then shoot it out the back. I do kind of wish Flux offered something like this with this kit, but their included fan works for the most part. Now on the safety side of things, it has your normal suite of safety features with the big one being anytime that this lid is open, it's going to cut the power to the laser. What's nice is once you close it, you can actually restart it. Now I did a couple tests just with built-in software. So this is just on a uh, three millimeter birch plywood. Uh, and you can see uh, all powers and at all speeds, uh, it cut all the way through. And this only maxed out at 60% power. So I never actually ran it at 100%. And then on the engraving side of things, you can see pretty much the exact same. And again, that is when we ran it all the way up to 900 millimeters per second. But this other test maxing out at 300 millimeters per second. Second. Now, one of the advantages of a CO2 machine versus a diode machine, laser frequency is different, meaning you can do different materials. The big one being clear acrylic. Now, this is three millimeter clear acrylic. And it's kind of hard to see, but it actually does a really good job cutting pretty much all the way through until this kind of bottom portion of the test. But this specifically is cast acrylic, which is a really, really nice job. It gives you these really nice clean cuts. This is something you can't do with a diode machine. Anything that is clear, you're not going to be able to engrave. And that actually also includes glass. You're not going to be able to cut glass on a machine like this, but you definitely can engrave glass. So if you're doing glass of words that you need text on, a CO2 laser like this is going to be a really nice option. Now, in terms of the software, they have their own custom software called Beam Studio that you can connect a bunch of different ways. One is through Wi-Fi. It can be through Ethernet or USB. And unlike Glowforge software, it doesn't live online. So it runs locally on your machine. But since this has inbuilt Wi-Fi, you get the added benefit of being able to control it remotely. In terms of the software itself, I would definitely say it's a uh, easier, more basic version of Lightburn, which is what I like to use on all of my machines. But that also means it's not super complicated, but it still has enough details and settings in there that you're going to be able to dial in your machine to use. But the software brings me to probably my biggest drawback with the machine, and this might just be user error, but I haven't found a really easy way to position your artwork on your 
material. You can definitely go the camera route, but doing that camera process does take a minute to get a full scan because it has to individually move it across your work bed. Now, some other desktop CO2 machines, as well as especially diode machines, do an image trace. So in case of a laser diode, it will turn that to a very low power, and then physically move it around the border so you know exactly where it's going to go on your material. Now, CO2s, that laser is invisible, so a lot of machines will actually have an additional laser, like, like a little red laser pointer that does pretty much the exact same thing. You don't have that functionality with this machine. So the camera out, while it's pretty exact, will take a minute to get everything lined up versus doing the image trace is usually really quick with any of my other machines. Now, all of that brings me to my overall impression in that this machine is very, very nice, even compared to the Omtech Polar, the g -Wick, Just the user experience in this machine is nice from the jump. And I can really see it geared towards folks that don't have a ton of experience with lasers but you do want a laser to do some pretty high-end stuff, especially if you're running like a small business and you're selling products with it. Now, we definitely have compared this machine to the other desktop CO2s that are out there. Let's actually break this down into categories and give you a winner in each one. We're looking at the Flux Hexa, the Omtech Polar, the Gleek Cloud Pro, I think version two, as well as the Glowforge Pro, so the highest in. In terms of power, we have 60 watts, 50 watts for Omtech and the GWIC, and then 45 watts for the Glowforge Pro. So the 60 watt guy right here, takes the point. In terms of cutting area, the Flux Hexa is the biggest, coming in at nearly 28 by 16 inches versus about 20 by 12 inches, and then 20 by 11 on the Glowforge Pro. So Hexa takes the point on that. The max height might be the biggest advantage for this machine. You have basically five inches on this versus about two inches on everything else. So the Hexa takes the point. Now let's talk about speed. We're at 900 millimeters per second on the Hexa versus 500 millimeters per second on the Omtech Polar, 600 millimeters per second on the Gweek Cloud Pro. And I actually don't know what the speed is on the Glowforge Pro because they don't list it. They just give you like a percentage from zero to 100. But I've actually done a side-by-side -side comparison of the same thing between the Glowforge and the Omtech Polar. And I did find the Omtech Polar was actually a little bit faster. But regardless of all of that, the Flex Hexa is the fastest. So I'll give the advantage to this machine again. All right, now coming up to software. Again, this is Beam Studio. That is your only option. On the Glowforge side of things, you have to use Glowforge's software, which is web-based, which a lot of people do not like, meaning you have to be connected to the internet. Again, you can connect to this a bunch of different ways. You don't have to be on the internet to do it. But I do have to give the advantage to the Omtech Polar, as well as the GWIT, because they support Lightburn, which by far is my favorite piece of software. I definitely like this software better than Glowforge's software, just so that it is pretty easy to use, minus the ability to do the trace and the camera things we've talked about before. And speaking of camera, pretty much all of these machines do have a camera, but the Glowforge actually has two. One of the lid, and one right in the head they use for focusing. So I will give the advantage to Glowforge. They do a lot of image processing. Next up is autofocus. So with Polar and the GWIC machine, they say it's auto, but it's really not. It's really that the Z axis can be automatically moved, but you still have to put in the thickness of your material. So that's how it knows. Versus Glowforge, which does it all with the camera, but the Hexa does it with a physical touch probe with an entire work bed that moves up and down. And that is really similar to what you're gonna find in more of the industrial style CO2 machines. So I'm gonna give the focus advantage to the Hexa. In terms of connection, all the machines other than Polar are the same. So you have all the same options. We'll give a point to all three of these or like a negative point to Glowforge. Now I kind of have this like other features section, mainly being that all the other machines offer you the ability to do a pass through, meaning that there's a tray that pulls out and you can put in material that is bigger than the machine and still have it engraved. With Hexa, you are limited to its work area. Now the work area is the biggest of all those machines, but you don't have any way to extend the work area. So the point will go to the other three machines. And then lastly, probably the first thing you look at when you look at any of these, and that is the price. The Hexa is at 6,300, the Polar is 2,900, the Week Cloud Pro is 3,400, and then the Glowforge Pro is 7,000. So that point goes to the Omtech Polar. And that has been one of the big reasons that I have recommended the Omtech Polar in the past, just because it is basically the cheapest you can get into a nice desktop CO2 machine. But if you want to go on the higher end, you've got the Hexa with the higher end price. So for going by points, Hexa is a clear 
winner. But when it comes to a recommendation, it all depends because each of those categories are gonna be weighed differently depending on your situation. So is this worth two times the cost as the competitors? It really depends on if the increased power, the increased work area, and especially the increased Z axis, how important that is to your situation. You can check out my review of the other machines we've talked about right here. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.